I'm the executive director of the Louisiana Policy Institute for Children, an independent source of data, research, and pertinent information for policymakers. The Louisiana Policy Institute for Children works to advance policies that ensure Louisiana's young children have access to high quality early care and education. We know that early care and education investments in Louisiana are largely funded with federal and state dollars. However, local revenue streams offer an important means to just not to just expand early learning, but for community leaders to respond to the unique needs of children, families, businesses, and educators in their communities. Local leaders have the ability to become powerful agents of change by investing in local early care and education systems to support children, families, businesses, and the economy. But we also know that finding ways to generate local revenue can be challenging and overwhelming for those that are not intimately familiar with early care and education systems. So we decided to develop a toolkit with the goal of providing guidance and identifying innovative ways that localities can fund early childhood in their communities. During the 2022 state legislative session, Louisiana secured $40 million in one-time funding to the Louisiana Early Childhood Education Fund to incentivize cities and parishes to invest in the expansion of high-quality early care and education. Louisiana's Early Childhood Education Fund is a state matching fund that offers local entities a dollar for dollar match on investments made to expand access to quality early care and education in their communities. Though we are proud of this historic investment from the state, from state local communities and municipalities also have an opportunity to invest in the unique needs of their own communities. We are happy to partner with the Children's Funding Project on today's release of our local funding toolkit which you will learn more about later in this presentation. If you have any questions during the presentation, please utilize the chat and we'll have time for Q&A at the end of the presentation. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce the wonderful Olivia Allen from the Strategy Director at the Children's Funding Project to kick us off before we dive into our toolkit. Olivia? Thank you, Libby. Children's Funding Project is a national social impact organization that helps communities and states expand equitable opportunities for children and youth through strategic public financing. More specifically, my team at Children's Funding Project helps local communities identify and secure local sources of public funding for early childhood. In Louisiana specifically, Children's Funding Project has supported the New Orleans Early Childhood Millage since 2019, first when a team came to our institute on securing local funding by a ballot measure, and then later as a member of our Children's Funding Cohort. We were thrilled when this spring New Orleans became the first locality in the state to fund early childhood education directly with local revenue, and we hope to support other communities in Louisiana on the same journey. Investing in access to high quality early childhood programs for all children unlocks a cascade of positive impacts from preparing our youngest children to uh, have positive impacts later in life to improving our economy and allowing parents to work or pursue education. Many local communities want to ensure that all children have the opportunity to get a strong start in life, but cannot do so with the current funding allocated to them by the state or federal government and aren't sure how to pursue local funding to fill the gap. That's why we at Children's Funding Project are so excited and pleased to introduce Candace Weber, Partnerships Director at the Louisiana Policy Institute for Children, to discuss the new Louisiana Local Funding Toolkit. Candace. Thank you, Olivia, and thank you, Children's Funding Project. Uh, you guys have been a key partner in identifying and tracking local funding strategies in several states as communities look to uh, strengthen their own early childhood system. And so, for example, one of the states that Children's Funding Project worked with is North Carolina Early Childhood Foundation. And so their toolkit had several strategies that inspired our toolkit. And so in understanding the landscape in Louisiana and building off of local strategies that have worked well in our state, uh, today I'm happy to share our local funding toolkit with all of you. Uh, and for other states present on the call, uh, we hope that this will inspire you to develop a toolkit as well to encourage local funding in your state. And so now what you'll see on the screen, I'll briefly give an overview of the contents and what you'll find within our toolkit. You'll notice we start off with a comprehensive overview of the state of early care and education in Louisiana. And we did this because we wanted to ground the reader on how early care and education funding works on a local level. 
We were also intentional about educating readers, not only on uh, local funding streams, but also on ways to maximize local funding via multiple funding sources. So whether it's braiding funds, blending funds, layering funds, and if someone isn't familiar with how each of those finance strategies work or what those terms even mean, uh, we explain that in the toolkit as well. Because really this toolkit is designed to help localities understand all the potential funding levers for strengthening their early care and education system, regardless of how well established their current system is, or if they're just getting started on expanding early care and education in their community. Which is also why at the end of the toolkit, we included a community readiness assessment to help localities gauge their starting point um, along the journey of increasing local funds. And last but not least, I'll call it the main attraction of this toolkit is where we list out several options to fund early learning systems. So including uh, funding strategies such as the local property millage that was like what was done in New Orleans and what Olivia mentioned earlier. Uh, but at this time, I'd like to highlight two other uh, local strategies that we list in the toolkit. These two strategies have been used to fund early learning systems in two different areas in our state. And so the first one I'd like to highlight is the school readiness tax credits for businesses, which is an option available to all businesses in Louisiana. But Point Coupee Parish is a great example with this funding strategy because they've leveraged school readiness tax credits to encourage greater local investment in quality programs benefiting three-year-olds specifically. And so to talk more about how they encourage the use of tax credits to the businesses in their area, I'd like to introduce Carol Ewing. She is the board chair of the Point Coupee Early Childhood Coalition. So Carol, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Candace. Uh, yeah, so I am the board chair for the Point Coupee Early Childhood Coalition. Uh, I've been board chair since August of last year. I have been on the board uh, since August of 2021, but prior to that, I have been donating as a business owner in Point Coupee Parish to the coalition since 2016 when uh, we became the, the resource and referral agency in Point Coupee Parish. Um, there's a, there are various tax credits that are available in, Point Coupee, in Louisiana, uh, about five that fall under the school readiness tax credit, but the one that I'm going to talk to you about is the one for business owners. Uh, this tax credit seems too good to be true. Businesses can donate up to $5,000 to uh, resource and referral agencies in Louisiana and receive a dollar for dollar uh, tax credit on their tax returns, Louisiana tax returns. So what this does in essence is as a business owner, I know that I have a tax liability to Louisiana. I'm gonna have to pay it no matter what. Instead of sending those funds to Louisiana for those funds to be used in places that I don't know that they will be used, I can donate to a CCRNR and receive the, the tax re refund and basically say, okay, instead of my money going to Louisiana, I want it to go to early child care in Point Coupee Parish. It's phenomenal. Um, in Louisiana, this has generated about $1.3 million of uh, donations for our resource and referral agencies. For Point Coupee Parish, we actually just tallied up our numbers for 2022. And we brought in around $300,000 for um, the Point P Early Childhood Coalition to go towards our resource, and, I mean, to our uh, child care in Point P. Um, the benefits that we've seen with this, we're able to hire coaches that go into our child care centers. And these coaches have helped strengthen our child care. In 2016, when we started out, all the child care centers in Point P Parish were rated two stars or fewer. Um, the numbers for 2023 have come out and they're all three stars or higher and one of them is at the highest rated five stars so we've seen significant improvement and as Candace pointed out, uh, we have also leveraged these funds traditionally in Louisiana, Louisiana serves about 50% of at risk three year olds and we are serving about 90% so we're doing a pretty good job of reaching at risk people and you know we Every child needs this. Every child needs education. It's a very important, pivotal time, zero to four years old. So um, we're focusing on that and we think we're doing a great job. That being said, I think there's plenty room for us to improve. I'm excited about this toolkit. I'm glad y'all are bringing it out. I'm interested to find out where we're missing, what we're leaving on the table. So thank you for doing this. Uh, if anyone has any questions, you can drop them in the chat or you know, we'll be around for a Q&A at the end. So thank you, Candace.
Thank you, Carol. And thank you for your continued efforts to create awareness around the use of these tax credits for local businesses. Very exciting seeing the success and what you guys have been able to do uh, as a result of these tax credits. And so the second local funding strategy uh, I'd like to highlight is private investments. And so it is now my pleasure to bring in Christy Gustafson. Uh, she is the CEO of Community Foundation of North Louisiana. And Christy will tell us how private investment has been used to fund early care and education in the city of Shreveport. So Christy. And I'm now not on mute. Thanks so much, Candace. Um, so another strategy that communities consider is private investment. So of course, at the Community Foundation, what we do is match donor dollars with needs of the community. And so um, we brought together local business leaders and philanthropic organizations, as well as the city, the parish, in 2018 to discuss all of our early childhood education needs. And ultimately what we did was fundraised um, to raise a million dollars and get a million dollar match from the state to provide scholarships for children ages zero to three to attend type three early child care centers. So we're so excited that we have spent all of those scholarships for 2022 and scholarship over 200 children into early child care centers um, this year. So the great thing about that was in engaging our community on the front end before we raise the money and basically talking about the issue everywhere we went ad nauseum, um, we had a lot of partners in the community that really understood the need by the time we started to fundraise. And so our initial investment helped encourage funding from the city council. And in August of 2022, the city of Shreveport committed to invest $3 million of city funding annually for the Shreveport Early Start Initiative. We are absolutely thrilled about that investment. Um, we are also absolutely thrilled that the city council adopted that um, measure unanimously and without comment. So the awareness had been raised to the point where everybody understood it. They were thrilled to do it. So that Early Start Initiative could provide up to 600 or more scholarships for children ages zero to four um, to attend early child care centers in 2023. And again, the great part about that is the money that we raise here locally um, can be matched by the Louisiana Early Childhood Education Fund, which is a state matching fund that provides a dollar for dollar match. And, you know, when I was first doing this, going out and talking to private donors, it's a it's a great sell to say, I'm going to take your dollar and turn it into $2. So every every dollar that you give me turns into $2 and is an investment for our, um, our kids into preschool. So um, I think we've really helped to raise awareness about the issues of early childhood education and care um, and what that means for, um, you know, not only the children and their families immediately, but also for the city and the economy um, in the future. We're super proud to be um, a part of this effort, and I'm happy um, to answer um, any questions about how philanthropy can pay a, play a part in um, raising this awareness. Thank you, Christy, and awesome work. And it is exciting to see the continued growth of private investment in North Louisiana. And so we are hopeful that the local investment strategies like the ones you've heard today, as well as those listed in the toolkit, we're hopeful that it will equip local leaders with the knowledge and ways to increase uh, local funding for early care and education in their community. And so one more quick slide. So where can you find our toolkit? And so it can be found on our website, which is policyinstitutela.org. You'll see the word research as an option in our toolbar. And then once you click on that, you'll see a local initiatives options. Once you click on that, that will take you directly to our toolkit specifically. But if you have any questions about the strategies in the toolkit, or even if you need support with implementation of any of the strategies, do reach out to us at info at policyinstitutela.org. So at this time, I will pause to check the chat for any questions you all might have had throughout the event. Oh, I'm seeing some good comments. Uh, so Christy Gilmore has a question. Uh, Christy, I think this is for you. So it says, for private investments, is there a tax break for these investors? 
Yes, of course, if you make, if you are a private investor and you make a contribution to a 501c3 and you itemize um, your charitable deductions on your tax return, um, see your tax advisor if you're not sure, <laughs> then um, you would get um, a tax advantage in making that philanthropic contribution. And of course, um, there's also the tax credit that's available to businesses um, of up to $5,000 to support um, that effort as well. So, yes. All right, I think she has a quick follow. It says, what if it's not to a CCR and R? Um, I don't know of other, I mean, you can, you know, charitable gifts to, our gifts to municipalities can also be considered charitable um, by the IRS if you take certain steps. So for example, if the city were raising funds and a donor wanted to, to donate money to the city for that purpose or the parish, um, those th there can be deductions there. But again, this is something that anybody, a donor is gonna wanna talk to their tax advisor before they make that kind of make a contribution to a non-501c3 just to make sure that they're jump through all the hoops that they need to do that. Got it. I and see that. no, you can't donate, the business can't donate to the center directly. The business has to donate to the, um, Candace, I'm forgetting the name of the local. Oh, uh, CCRNR. Yes, thank you. Our child care resource and referral agency. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. Great questions. Uh, let's see, any other, nope. Other questions in the chat or in the Q&A? I see one where Melanie asked, uh, can a business donate to her center directly? Um, so there are actually under the SRTC um, umbrella of tax credits. So outside of the business dollar for dollar tax credit that you can get, and this is kind of outside of the realm of this, of what I spoke on before, businesses actually can um, pay for employees to send their kids there. And depending on the rating of the child care center, they can get, it's not a as much of a tax credit. It's And I'd have to go back and look at um, the kind of what's out on Louisiana Believes about what it is, but businesses can get tax credits. It's just a percentage tax credit. It's not the dollar for dollar tax credit if they pay for employees to go to the child care centers. Um, there was another direct question from uh, Megan about her. Um, she had no idea about the SRTC tax credit and asked if we could donate uh, for the business dollar for dollar tax credit directly to the uh, child care center. No, it has to go to the resource and referral agencies, but Every parish should have a resource and referral agency in Louisiana. Um, ours is specific to Point Pointe Parish. Some of them have um, CCRNRs that cover kind of an umbrella of parishes, so multiple parishes. So you should have a CCRNR and you should see if they're getting donations, should be getting contacted by your CCRNR. Um, so you should kind of do some research and find that out. But there are also under the SRTC umbrella, child care centers can get um, tax credits for, you know, if their teachers get certain certifications. This is outside of the business tax credit. It's other uh, tax credits that child care resource and refer, I mean, that uh, child cares can get under that umbrella for their employees. Um, also, parents who send their kids to certain levels of uh, or rated child care centers can also get um, tax credits on their uh, taxes for it. So it, like I said, this, I just spoke to one specific tax credit under this, but there are others under the SRTC umbrella that I think you should probably have the link through the toolkit to see all the different opportunities under the SRTC umbrella. Thank you for, for sharing that, Carol. Great questions. Um, and I do want to note that this, uh, Presentation is being recorded, so you will have a copy of this um, to review um, as well. And so, any, uh, let me see, there's another, is the link in the toolkit? Um, Megan, can you be a little bit more specific with the link that you're referring to? The link to research the tax credits. 
relative to your parish. I think we have a link to who your CCRNR is. Um, so, but you can reach out to us directly. We can help you with that um, to the direct link on Louisiana Believes that will tell you more information um, on the tax credits. Uh, another question. All right, Carol, this may be for you. Can business donations that are eligible for school readiness tax credit also be used to draw down dollars from the ECE fund? ECE fund, I'm trying to, I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I'd have to do more research about the ECE fund. Um, I think this is from, I think this is just funding that comes from EGMS and I don't know the answer to that. Um, Hi, this is Libby. I'm sorry, just swooped in real quick. Um, so no, the school readiness tax credits, um, can't be used to draw down the ECE fund. They're used to actually um, help draw down all the federal dollars. That would, So it's our maintenance of effort from the state level to be able to draw down all the federal dollars we're able to, and they can't be used towards the incentive fund. Thank you. Liz. You're welcome. Great questions. All right, well, thank you everyone for your time and attention today. Please take a look at our toolkit. Please use the toolkit. Uh, we are confident it will equip you uh, to build community and strategies uh, to increase local funding for early learners in your area. So thanks for joining everyone. Have a great day.